Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we're going to be looking at the use of the DSTWU block in Aspen Plus. Now, I have set up already a sheet with the components toluene, benzene, and cumene using the Suave Red Lick Kwong method and I have accepted the binary interaction parameters that are the default. So we're wanting to look at these columns and these first three columns are all ways of modeling a distillation tower. DSTWU is a shortcut technique that is very similar to what we've covered in class, very similar to the Fenske, Underwood, Gilliland, Kirkbride equations, except for instead of the Fenske equation, it uses the Wynn equation that we did not address, but it is very similar. Distal is a different technique. It's the Edmister method, but it is also an approximate method. And so these two should not be used for a final design, but we use these equivalent to how we use the McCabe-Teeley technique. So it's going to get us an approximation. And then we're going to use those in the RADFRAC, which is the rigorous solution to the mesh equations, the mass and the energy balances, plus equilibrium information. And this is going to be our final goal, that this will be used to do a design. So we're going to start today with a DSTWU. So let me add a DSTWU tower, and let's just open it up, okay? So as you see here, what we've got to enter, we can either enter the number of stages or the reflux ratio. I'm going to enter my light and heavy key, and I need to say which component it is, but I also need to say what the fractional recovery is. Now we have to be a little careful here because these fractional recoveries if you read these, they are both for what's the recovery in the distillate. So be sure that you read the, num the little text boxes that pop up carefully if you're not sure. I need to know the pressure in the condenser and reboiler, and I need to know the total condenser or partial condenser conditions that I'm going to be using. Once I do that, what it's going to allow me to do is calculate the reflux ratio, both the minimum and the actual, and then the number of stages, again, both the minimum and the actual, the location of the feed for what it comes up with as its actual answer, what are the duties in the reboiler and in the condenser, and the temperatures in the distillate and the bottoms. It will also give me a ratio of the distillate flow rate compared to the, the feed flow rate. So that's what we're going to be doing. I have a problem here where we're going to use, um, and I've got this, let me pull it over here. So we're going to use a feed that's 100 kilomoles per hour, saturated vapor at one atmosphere, 40% benzene, 30% toluene, and 30% cumene, okay? And what we're going to be doing with it is creating a tower that operates at one atmosphere with a total condenser. I want a fractional recovery of toluene in the distillate of 95% and fractional recovery of cumene in the bottoms of 95%, okay? So we're going to be entering these things here. We're going to set up, you have a choice of putting in number of stages or reflux ratio. You would put in the number of stages if maybe you have a tower and you're wanting to predict what's going to come out, what reflux ratio would I need to get a certain fractional recovery in this case. Um, most of the time we actually go with the reflux ratio option. And this is a little weird to enter. First of all, you're going to enter a negative number, okay? What that's going to do is when you tell it negative, it knows that you want to use this number that shows up after the negative sign as a multiplier to the minimum reflux ratio. So you can enter 
you know, anything, if you use negative one, you're going to actually get the minimum reflux ratio being used, okay, which will give you infinitely many stages. So that's probably a bad choice. Um, you can enter anything you want to, usually something between like 1.05 to 1.5 is going to be more optimal. I'm going to choose in this case that I want to use 1.25 times the minimum reflux ratio. So let's look at how we're going to enter that. So I want to put in the reflux ratio. I'm going to tell it that I want to put in 1.25 times the minimum. So I put in the negative and then 1.25. My light key was specified as uh, toluene and I'm recovering 95% in the distillate. My heavy key is cumene and I want 95% in the bottoms which means the other 5% is going to be in the distillate. So you've got to be a little careful with the heavy key. We're setting this up so that it's all going to operate at one atmosphere. And I do indeed want a total condenser. Okay, so this is set up. Now I do need to have flow streams. So let's add our material streams. I'll put in a feed, a distillate, and a bottoms product. My feed was specified. Oh, okay, I'm having a hard time getting that stream to open. There, finally clicked on the right spot. Okay, so in the feed, I have this set up so I'm using vapor fraction and pressure, so one atmosphere with saturated vapor. I'm going to do this on a flow rate of 100 kilomoles per hour, and mole fractions, 30% toluene, 40% benzene, and 30% cumene. Now I can come back to this and at this point I should be able to go to home, the run is ready, and I can push that. And we're just waiting. Okay, so this is now ready. If I want to look at my results from this, it's going to show me the minimum reflux ratio, the actual reflux ratio, minimum number of stages, actual stages, feed location, number of stages above the feed, how much heat I require for the reboiler and condenser, the temperatures for the distillate in the bottoms, and the distillate to feed flow fraction. Okay, so let's go back to our input screen and look at calculation options. So input calculation options. Okay, so one of the things here that I can do is I can generate a table of reflux ratio versus number of theoretical stages. And if I do this, um, we can vary this from kind of wherever it said, but it said we needed a minimum of 5.06 stages, so um, significant digits is not going to be what I want to do. Um, the initial number of stages, if I needed 5.06 as the minimum, let's say 6, and the final, let's go with maybe 15, okay? And if I do this and run it, and then look at my it shows me what the reflux ratio is that's required for these various numbers of stages. Okay? So that sort of gets you something that can be very interesting to look at. Okay? We also had the option 
of calculating the HETP. Okay. If I choose this, okay, what it's going to do is it's going to ask me for what is the height equivalent for packing in a packed tower. Okay. And so you can put in a number there, you know, maybe it's 0.8 meters, okay, whatever your number is. And if I run it this way, and look at my results, okay, then it's going to tell me what the height is that is required, okay, the HETP. Um, there's also a tab over here called Balance. Maybe we can get that to open. And this shows me just simply what I've got flowing in and out and just to make sure that the energy and mass flows balance in a way that I expected them to. Okay. Um, the energy in and out will not be equal to each other, but this is going to be due to the relative difference in heat required as input at the reboiler and loss at the condenser. Okay. If you didn't like this, you can modify your input to this, but once you're happy with this, we're now going to use this as a starting point to the RADFRAC column. So I thank you very much for your time. We're going to next look at the DISTL separator.